spotlighting Hawaii's leaders. We want to bring in Governor David E. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Mayor Derek Kawakami. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for being here. Spotlighting, spotlighting the issues. Where is the virus right now in our community? How much is this overall going to cost the state? How are you responding to community's concerns? Talk about the level of citations that you guys are writing. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Kalei Suji on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Chaminade University. Well, aloha and good morning. Thanks so much for tuning in here to Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Yanji Denise. And we are, of course, uh, a little late this morning. We apologize. We ran into some technical difficulties in trying to connect our guests this morning. And it will be a little unconventional in the way that we present the message. But uh, we feel that this is the best way moving forward to get the message across, especially on a topic where we're highlighting two of our former governors. Yeah, this is something that we uh, really wanted to talk about. We, it's made a lot of news. Of course, this is the Aloha Stadium redevelopment plans. Governors Cayetano, Wahe'e, and Abercrombie have all uh, expressed their opinion that the focus should be housing, not the sports facility. Uh, unfortunately, we're having a little bit of trouble connecting uh, with Governor Abercrombie's uh internet stream. So I actually have him on FaceTime and he's right here. I know it's different when it's his turn to talk. When we ask him a question, I'll put him up to the camera. His audio sounds great. So he will be able to participate. It's a little different, Ryan, but you know, these are pandemic times and we make do. And that's right. And we're going to bring in uh, also Governor, former Governor John Wahey, who uh, is logged in and ready to go as well. We thank you for being a part of our conversation this morning. Aloha. Thank you so much. Uh, let's begin uh, and first start off with what is being proposed. And maybe we'll start with you, Governor Wahey, and then we'll get over to Governor Abercrombie. Uh, what are your thoughts on the proposed development and redevelopment of Aloha Stadium uh, and, and some of the reasons why you may not be in favor of what is currently moving forward? Well, I think that uh, we've said it a number of times before, but it's a mistake. It's a mistake to try to uh, rebuild the stadium uh, when the real focus of that area ought to be on housing and the development of housing. And so you're building a stadium for, you know, who, who, you, who are you building the stadium for? And it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And we actually really don't have a tenant. And now one of the obvious tenants would have been the University of Hawaii uh, as a football team. And yet... Uh, they can't wait for the stadium to be built uh, before they play their games. So meanwhile, they're, they're, they're having their own stadium built. And the whole thing just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And I guess uh, Go Governor Neal actually did some research this week. And Neil, why don't you tell, uh, tell the people about the um, how urgent it is that something be done at Manoa or that a stadium be done. I, I'd be happy to do that, uh, Ryan and, and Yonji, if, if that's okay. Yes, Are please. You, go uh, ahead, Governor. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, regardless of what happens out at Palava, and, and of course, uh, what John has made the uh, exact point that needs to be made, that housing should be the top priority uh, regardless. But no matter what happens with Halaba, and it's not going to happen for years and years, terms of the stadium anyway. Right now, the focus uh, needs to be on the, at the University of Hawaii football team uh, because if the stadium, uh, the King Stadium is not completed to a 15,000 seat capacity right now, and I'm talking about right now, um, we will lose Division One football. Uh, the, you must have, according to the NCAA, and in this instance, the NCAA is is exactly correct. Um, if, you, if you if we are not started right now, we must we must show progress. Uh, and they're willing to hold off sanctions because we built the ten thousand uh, seats uh, stadium at, at, at the field right now. But we have to show progress, including tickets sold by twenty twenty three, and by twenty twenty four or twenty five. We have to have. Uh, completed a 15,000 capacity stadium, or we simply will be uh, forbidden to have Division One football, plain and simple. Um, the, 
the university has proved that it can uh, operate at flank speed uh, to build the uh, uh, the 10,000 seat stadium, which is which the NCAA has said uh, shows progress. They need to add 5,000 seats, which which they can do, but they need to get started right away. They, the uh, uh, governor, uh, uh, Governor Ige understands this uh, completely. Uh, we, 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 the three of us have talked with him. He understands that. The university has a, a, a capital improvements budget of about eighty million dollars. That is, is what's called a lump sum, where they can they can uh, focus that eighty million dollars on various priorities. They're going to have to take at least twenty five percent of that eighty million dollars in order to build uh, the uh, five thousand additional seats that need to be done, putting in the restrooms, the upgrade of uh, uh, electrical health and safety issues at uh, at. Uh, uh, at Manoa. So uh, uh, if they don't do that, I, we will simply not have a football team. Uh, uh, while the stadium authority and, and the Department of Accounting and General Services are, are uh, attempting to carry out the legislative mandate to this point, um, the University of Hawaii, uh, uh, a Division I uh, capacity, will simply disappear. Well, the players are already leaving. I understand some players are already just leaving. They they know then this is a slippery slope. And if you're going to be, you know, you're going to be recognized beyond a college uh, football, you, you may want to change uh, teams, and that's going to affect us. You can see uh, with the, the departure of uh, of two of the top players, uh, Cordero and and uh, and. Uh, uh, the, the, the halfback, um, uh, and I suspect there'll be more. I, I, I don't think that this is going to be the end uh, in, in terms of the portal, uh, uh, moving to the mainland to uh, continue their, their, their careers. This is completely undermining uh, Coach Graham and his team, as well as the existing team. People need to realize when we do recruiting, uh, the team itself helps to recruit the, the players, uh, and uh, by by uh, not building the stadium right now to 15,000 capacity, which by the way is terrific. There are there, uh, next year at the University of Hawaii campus at Manoa, there'll be 5,000 students on campus. They of course will will, will want to go down to the games. Um, they're prepared to to uh, handle all of the other problems. Uh, that uh, that people have brought up that, that uh, uh, whether it's parking, whether it's uh, food, whether whatever it is, all that can be can easily handled, and it has to be. The point is, this is not subject to, to conversation. This isn't subject. Uh, uh, the NCAA is is totally disinterested in in uh, in uh, uh, conversations uh, 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 about uh, having a stadium at at Manoa. They have to have it, or just the legislation needs to say, look, we're not going to have Division One football as too bad, uh, but uh, but we're, we we're, instead we're going to uh, continue with this this uh, uh, bread and circuses coliseum out there at, at Halaba, and the, the University of Hawaii as a Division One team uh, uh, will simply disappear. And let me let me uh, jump in here and then follow up. Uh, we'll ask, pose this question to you first, Governor Wahe. Uh, we know that Aloha Stadium obviously is utilized in other means ju just beyond, uh, you know, University of Hawaii football. And the thought is that this would be a complex that would be able to accommodate other sport professional sporting uh, teams and use in a variety of other ways, concerts that we've seen it use over the years. Uh, what would that facility uh, be if there is no replacement for Aloha Stadium? Uh, you know, I, I hear that argument, and it's interesting to me, you know, because I have lived long enough to remember that I could probably count those events on one hand. <laughs> that happened at the Aloha Stadium in, in the sense. I mean, how many Elvis Presley uh, concerts are we going to have? I mean, we're still waiting for the Rolling Stones. You know, the point is that uh, what what this is all of, what that vision is based on a hope. You know, so we're going to have someday have something uh, happen. I mean, Hawaii built Halaba Stadium, and I, you know, I I drank that Kool Aid. I, I went out. We looked all around for professional sports to play in Hawaii, and we got uh, AAA baseball with the Islanders, 
And what happened was that we had great attendance for about a year or two. And then, uh, as with all minor league sports, the players started to get uh, drafted to the majors, which is what they went to play for. And so we lost the pennant. You know, uh, and we did that. We tried football, and it didn't work. You know, it, it, I don't think that it's a case of if we build it, they'll come. I mean, are they coming? I mean, we need – if you – everywhere else when they build the fabulous stadium, they already had a team signed up. They already had sports done. We, th- we don't even have the Pro Bowl anymore. Well, let's talk about let's talk about what you see instead. If it's not a sports facility, what kind of housing would you see going in there, and what kind of a difference do you think that could make? We know that you know throughout the state we are over sixty thousand homes short on this island alone. I believe it's about twenty five thousand, perhaps more. Um, so, how how much of a difference could housing in that area make to help? Well, our, our it, it would make a lot of difference. I mean, in, in fact, what people don't recall maybe is that originally there was housing on the site that was torn down to build the stadium. So that used to be uh, uh, an area of housing. So one of the two things, the first thing we ought to know, uh, think about when if, if we do build the stadium, the stadium has to be subsidized. The, the, the state of the, the uh, legislature, I think, allocated like $170 million for a stadium that's going to cost at least $500 million. They may put in more if that, by the time you build it. Uh, you could cost that much. But nevertheless, it needs to be subsidized. So the first thing that it would have to happen is the kind of housing that you would build would be affected. Uh, you would have to generate, uh, you know, uh, housing for a uh, for a larger profit margin. Now, so the first thing that would happen if you don't build a stadium is that you could uh, have more affordable housing. That's the point. And and that's what we need. So let's bring in Governor uh, Abercrombie to uh, expand upon that. Go ahead, Governor Abercrombie. Yeah, oh, sorry, John. I, 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 no, no, go ahead, Neil. I, you know, I've always been enthralled John, listening to you. <laughs> Uh, if if you build, uh, ask a developer who, by the way, could be uh, uh, two separate developers, one for housing and one for 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 the stadium. If you ask a developer to uh, to b- build a stadium, every single dollar that goes to 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 that stadium from the developer is taken away from housing. Housing is a million dollars right now, a million dollars to get the the, the average. Uh, 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 a price for, for a house on, on Oahu right now is a million dollars. Are you kidding? And uh, to take 250, 300, or 400 million dollars into a stadium when all of that money is uh, by, by a housing developer could go into the housing, what John has said is absolutely correct. If you want uh, 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 middle income housing, if you want workforce housing, if you want housing that people can afford on the island of Oahu, you have to make the investment uh, in that 100 acres out at Oahu. The, the very idea of putting up some stadium and talking about getting uh, uh, some Snoop Dogg or, or Rolling Stone in here to come in and take the money out when we have this housing crisis is is uh, abominable. And Governor, yeah, I would come and, to, you know, and, just and the other like thing is that uh, the, the stadium will occupy what 20, 20 acres plus of land that could go to housing. So not only would you be able to build housing more cost effectively, you would be able to build more houses uh, if you weren't trapped into this whole stadium syndrome. Uh, Governor Abercrombie, we spoke to President, UH President David Lassner on this program a few weeks back, and he had mentioned that uh, the any sort of retrofitting of the current uh, Clarence C.C. Ching complex uh, would not be suitable for what the team needs. They would definitely want something a lot larger uh, and would want to expand on uh, you know, if it was to be a stadium to be built on the Manoa campus, it would have to be much larger. And the current facility at TC Ching is not uh, something that they would want. Uh, do you agree with those comments uh, that the current well, TC Ching complex cannot be used in that way? You know, I understand what you say. You're talking about two, two different things here. Um, um, it's, it's not a matter of whether he's right or whether he's wrong. He's, he's just making the observation um, that um, uh, ideally, um, uh, the, 
you would want to get up uh, a, a separate. Uh, let me start over again. He's 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 correct in the sense that uh, if you're going to get to about uh, twenty two thousand uh, a size stadium, if you want, it, you can't build it on the present site on on the on the on the, uh, on the present uh, stadium construction. But well, what is capable, what we are capable of is building it to fifteen thousand, which is what the NCA requires. And once you get that, and that can be done on the present site, which you build the seats on top of the seats. There's 10,000 seats there now. They add 5,000 seats with a, uh, uh, on top of the, the, the ones that are there now, which, by the way, means you're right on top of the ball game. It would be very, very exciting, tremendous experience, uh, and very enjoyable. That can be done. It can probably be done between 10 and, and 15, possibly $20 million dollars. Would, would put the whole thing up to the NCAA standards, and then we would not have this exodus of football players and so on. We'll be able to to uh, accommodate uh, the students, accommodate the public. Uh, uh, so he's he's right, and and if you if you can't build 20,000 20, plus stadium on the present uh, configuration at Ching Field, but you can build to fifteen thousand, which is what the NCAA requires. Uh, and, and I want to reemphasize to you folks, and I wish your sports department, all honesty, uh, Ryan and, 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 and Yanshi, I mean, you've got reporters there. Why haven't they, why haven't, why hasn't this been gone into? Uh, the, the indifference, uh, you know, on, uh, on, your, on your sports section or the reporting here, and the editorial board, by the way, coming out uh, with their editorial on, uh, on Hawaii about going ahead with it. You haven't even done the basic research. If, if we don't get the 15,000 capacity uh, stadium on the present site, which can be done in the next 12 to 18 months, we will be sanctioned by the NCAA to the point of removing uh, Hawaii from Division I uh, uh, football. I mean, that's that's a fact. That, 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 that cannot be refuted. And it's and it's not being reported, no matter what happens out in the lobby. So the president, uh, uh, the president is correct that if you want a larger stadium, it has to be built uh, be, probably in the in the oval behind uh, the, the the present uh, Ching complex, and it could be very easily. Uh, but we can build to the standards that will keep Division One football in Hawaii on the present site by moving it up uh, 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 another five thousand seat capacity. Yeah, I think I think the point being that uh, what you you have a current emergency now. That needs to be met. I mean, one of the things that we know absolutely is that the RFP that went out to build the Halaba Stadium bifurcated the housing project and the stadium project. So there's no, there's not, there's not even a beginning date for the Halaba Stadium to begin. It's sort of this illusionary thing that will happen down the road. In the meantime, the UH needs to maintain its. Uh, its status uh, in, with the uh, uh, Division One football, and they're going to need, they immediately need something around 15000 So you're doing a temporary stadium. You also got room to build a permanent stadium. I think what people don't realize, though, uh, about the Halava Stadium is that the UH actually had to pay to play in that stadium. So you took the football team, and they had to pay rent to pay to play in the stadium, and they received no financial benefit at all. They didn't get any uh, money from the concessions. They get any money from the ticket, all of that. So what what a, a stadium at the University of Hawaii would accomplish, which is not uh, you know part of the normal conversation is the fact that the football team and and, and uh, University of Hawaii Athletics would begin to have a revenue stream as, a, as opposed to an expense item. And that is an important consideration. Governor Wahe, I actually have a question that for both of you, but I'd like to start with you on this. Um, how has this idea been received? I know that you and uh, you know Mr. Cayetano and Mr. Abercrombie obviously uh, have a lot of contacts and a, and a lot of influence in our community. Um, do you think that you know this idea that you have of, of not having a stadium on site will go forward, given how many people are really committed to having that sports facility? I think that for for most people that I've talked to, they, they can't 
they see the logic very easily. Uh, of why why we why the University of Hawaii ought to have its own its own stadium. You know, I built the arena, uh, the Stan Sheriff Arena, and it just changed sports. I mean, it changed the volleyball, it made everything basketball stronger. It did everything. Uh, it you know, and so putting a, a stadium at the University of Hawaii because of the potential revenue stream, because of the location because of what it can do to the school uh, esprit de corps. All of those things are important. And for the average person, they like it. Now, there are people who keep clinging to this idea that somehow there's this sacred cow of Palava, or, uh, and we ought to do it again and again. Or the, another idea that keeps creeping up is that somehow building the stadium on Halava is the key to uh, doing uh, an entertainment complex of some kind. Uh, you know, here we, 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 you know, like I said uh, 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 so many times, between myself, Ben, and Neil, we've made enough mistakes to know one when we see one. And, I mean, we talk about entertainment complexes. I mean, Ben and I put together the uh, convention center. It was going to be an entertainment complex. I mean, now we were like a hundred million dollars needed maintenance. We don't know what we're going to do. We haven't even done what we needed to do with Waikiki. So yeah, the, 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 most people, most people, uh, kind of see the logic of separating the two projects: housing and the stadium. Um, there are there is a kind of because this is apparently some kind of legislative initiative there is uh you know the the, the types that want to straddle the fence uh, for whatever you know like uh, as i said like as neil pointed out i mean i like david but what he was his explanation of, of an answer really wasn't an answer he was telling you what was factual i mean you got to do something soon you know and blah 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 I want to get Gab Governor Abercrombie your your take on how this yeah. your proposal has been received by the community. I'm sorry. Uh, is it my turn? Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Um, look, <laughs> all this is an abstract. We're talking as if this is something that that uh, is already in existence. They haven't even put out an RFP for the stadium. They've now bifurcated the stadium building of the stadium from the rest of the so-called complex entertainment whether it's housing whether it's retail whatever it is that hasn't that hasn't even gone out we're talking about years from now we're not going to have regardless of what kind of housing high end or whatever it's not going to happen for years regardless of whether it's thirty-five thousand or whether snoop dogg is coming or, or whether some some of uh, a uh, soccer team is going to show up or a rugby team it's not going to happen for years and here and we have no idea no idea if it happens at all or not the next administration is going to do this there's going to be a, a new administration in, in less than a year we have no idea whether they're whether they're going to let themselves get saddled with four or five hundred million dollars worth of debt this doesn't make and in the meantime you have to get the stadium done at manoa or you lose the team this is what the facts are this is what needs to be done right now that that business out at Halava is 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 years away, and we can't afford the time wasted in building housing. We need to have housing in Halava. We need to finish the fifteen thousand uh, stadium at the University of Hawaii and get moving now. Uh, well, we thank you uh, both for those passionate responses on this project. Uh, but because we have you on, we did, and we do have some time because we started a little later. I uh, wanted to get your thoughts on a few other things. Uh, we'll start with you, Governor Wahe. Uh, you know, during this pandemic, we've seen a number of emergency proclamations that have been signed uh, by Governor David Ige to control what has been happening and to give him the authority to make some of those calls. And, and that has caused concern for some members of the legislature who are now looking at ways to rein in the governor's authority through those emergency proclamations. I wanted to get your thoughts, uh, having been and served in that capacity, uh, your thoughts on the legislature trying to adjust some of these uh, emergency proclamation and these powers. Yeah, I, I, I think that that would be a mistake. I mean, well, that would be, in my opinion, a legislative interference with an executive function. I mean, one of the reasons 
But one of the responsibilities of the governors uh, of the governor is to deal with emergency uh, emergency situations, and uh, I I don't think that you can deal with those kinds of situations by committee, which is what the legislature ultimately is. Um, yeah, so I, I think that would be bad policy. I think they they're playing up in a sense to the frustration that people feel uh, having gone through the pandemic and and gone through this uh, emergency situation. But on the other hand, um, even if they don't like what happened to uh, a particular uh, uh, proclamation. Um, what is it that the governors? What which which proclamation specifically uh, shouldn't have been done? I mean, I, I don't, I can't think of any. In fact, uh, my criticism might be the other way around. Why did we wait so long to do some of it? You know, uh, and, and that would be in a state that did some pretty pretty quick. So I, I don't know. I think the, I think that's. Uh, you know, it's like playing politics. I understood. Uh, Governor Abercrombie, want to get your thoughts on, yes. on the legislature? Yeah. On... Very quickly. Uh, you have to have the emergency proclamations. Look, you just got a new variant on the on the uh, on COVID-19 has just showed up in the islands in the last couple of days. The legislature meets once a year. They've got two or three thousand bills that they have to deal with. There's no way that the, the legislature can and substitute itself uh, uh, in any effective way for what needs to be done when you have emergencies that need to be addressed. Uh, take ho- take the housing, for example. The governor has issued in the past an emergency housing uh, proclamation in order to waive fees uh, uh, at, with the various departments of the city and county and the state, uh, wastewater treatment, water, water supply fees, and so on, in order to get, get housing built. Uh, you have to have that. You need to have uh, uh, emergency uh, uh, proclamations with respect to dealing with the COVID. You may have to do it with, with the Red Hill. Uh, the Department of, of, of Health, in my judgment, should have shut down uh, the Navy from being able to, to put fuel in, in those tanks already. The Board of Water Supply needs to be able to act uh, instantly. You can't go to the legislature and, and have Zoom hearings uh, uh, from people who, in the end, are only going to have to go to the to the governor or to the mayor, uh, to the mayors, to, to implement uh, administrative policies anyway. I think that uh, it, it, it's a whole sidelight issue that bears no relation to to, to present day reality. I want to follow up on uh, Governor Abercrombie's comments on Red Hill, uh, and we'll get both of their perspectives. But uh, Governor Wahey, we'll start with you. Uh, what what is your reaction to what's going on now with the water situation at Red Hill? You're of course. Uh, very familiar with that facility and probably have a lot more knowledge than any of us about its, you know, uh, whether or not it is vital to the operations of the Navy. Do you think that that facility should be shut down entirely? What, what's your reaction today on that? I, I'm, I'm with Neil on that. I think that, I don't know uh, I, if, I, I think the Department of Health ought to close the place now. Now, the, the um, you know, the Navy, understandably, the military, uh, always uh, takes the position that they um, they can't do without something. They can't do without it. They, they, there's no better way to do anything. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, uh, you know, that's been proven. <laughs> they couldn't do without Kahoa Lobby. They couldn't do without Barbara's Point. They couldn't do with any of these things, and yet they have done without it. And so when you hit an emergency like you're dealing with on Red Hill, I mean, what we ought to be doing is, uh, you know, getting together and finding another way to take care of, the, of whatever needs to be taken care of as opposed to uh, polarizing. So, yeah, we ought to close the place down. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, how much more do you need to do to demonstrate that those facilities are no longer viable, period? And Governor Abercrombie, your thoughts? Yes, very quickly. Well, I was, uh, you know, on the Armed Services Committee for for two decades, uh, uh, and I, as uh, a chair of the Air and Land Subcommittee uh, uh, on budgetary uh, items, uh, and I inspected the, uh, Red Hill, inspected those uh, 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 facilities, those 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 tanks, and I can tell you for a fact that they're completely. Uh, uh, 
the aquifer is completely vulnerable uh, to to an earthquake. Uh, we're one earthquake, one minor earthquake away from having the the, the water the, the, for uh, the island of Oahu and everybody on it being destroyed. It, it makes no sense at all. It should be it should be shut down today. Shut down today. And you and uh, the facilities to the degree that uh, that fuel has to be stored uh, need to be put elsewhere. The amount of money that's involved. Uh, uh, Millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. The 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 uh, the, the budget for one year of the, the Defense Department right now is over seven hundred and fifty billion dollars. So that is not an issue. It's never been a priority for the Navy. The Navy dissembles all the time. The the the, the admiral uh, who uh, the chief of uh, operations and spoke to to Representative Cahelli yesterday in Congress completely dissembling. They're not looking for re- root causes. They're not on top of anything. They're just hoping it all goes away while while they're they're in charge out here. And earthquakes are not going to to be interested in having a discussion with the with with the Navy or anybody else. That that aquifer is in danger. It needs to be shut down now, and we need to have alternative uh, 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 sites for whatever storage needs to be done. And uh, uh, the, the the president and and the uh, uh, Congress and uh, the, the Pentagon need to spend whatever money needs to be spent in order to do that and do it now. I I absolutely uh, am certain that there is no way on earth that the Navy can control whether or not there's going to be an earthquake that uh, that destroys uh, the the uh, capacity for the aquifer to to uh, be able to to service everybody on a wall. Well, we thank you, uh, Governor Abercrombie uh, and Governor Wahe for joining us. We know that this has been a uh, <laughs> unconventional way of getting the message across, but we heard the message loud and clear. Uh, it was interview. nice, Ron. It was nice reading Yunji's text <laughs> above <laughs> Neil's head. <laughs> live, uh, live streaming. You know, that's kind of how things go. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We have one. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, uh, Governor Abercrombie would like to say one more thing. I'm so sorry. Oh, yes. as, as usual, Cam would say, or Ben would say, as usual, I have one more thing to say. Um, <laughs> this is this is regards to the stadium and, and all the rest of it. The University of Hawaii, and, and again, I hope, uh, Brian, I hope, uh, Yonji, I hope the reporters at the Star Advertiser will go, go into this. The, the University of Hawaii, uh, has had a, a letter, a memorandum, sent to the controller uh, uh, and sent to the stadium authority uh, and management a year ago, a year ago, on, on UH Athletics and the new Aloha, uh, new Aloha Stadium plans. It has never been answered. They have a standing offer to, to negotiate and to contribute to, uh, to, to, the, to the plans out there and uh, in relation to the University of Hawaii, it has never been answered. The University of Hawaii has never had word one of discussion with the stadium authority or anybody or the legislature, anybody doing the, the so-called plan out there at the stadium. The University of Hawaii is seen as a, as, as a cash source uh, for, for the stadium authority. So I think that uh, our proposal, Ben, uh, John, and, and mine's proposal for the uh, uh, Ching Stadium and the housing uh, it, it is is I'm, I'm unhappy to say uh, a, 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 an exact replica of the of the relationship of the University of Hawaii to the Stadium Authority, which presently is zero. That's that's not right. And I, 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 that, that letter exists. Memorandum <laughs> was written on January seventh. See that? Uh, okay, Neil. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Ben's po- po- point. Uh, uh, Ben's part and say, okay, Neil. Okay, Neil. They want to end the show. So, so. <laughs> well, we, we thank you. We're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you so much. I'm gonna hang up this portion right now. Thank you so much, uh, Governor, and and thank you, Governor Wahe. We really do appreciate it. And thank you to the audience for sticking through with us and and for staying tuned. Uh, this is a very important message, and I think we covered a lot of ground this morning. So, Governor Wahe, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Aloha. Wow, well, Ryan, that's a first. My arms are tired, and uh, you know, you did get to see a few texts come through. I forgot to turn off the uh, the text alerts, but the, but the important thing is that uh, both governors and uh, Mr. Cayetano couldn't be with us this morning, but uh, that 
that they really have a lot of passion for this, and they do have some interesting points, uh, especially on that time frame. Uh, if that indeed uh, does bear out, that. UH has to have this facility, have a facility that seats that many. Uh, certainly, even if the lava were to go through, it would not go through in time. And the, the plans are right now that the athletic department is planning to expand uh, the current facility now so that it does meet the NCAA standards. Uh, and, and it is something that is in the works and will continue to evolve. That uh, What we see now uh, at the Clarence C. Chin Complex is not what we will see ultimately next season as the uh, as we know, that was sort of a rush to put all of that together, and the uh, University of Hawaii recognizes that more needs to be done to upgrade that, as that will be the home site for the next few years. So uh, a continued uh, involvement of that stadium will happen as in its current state, as well as adding more seats so that it may uh, qualify or, you know, make sure that it does fall within the NCAA regulations. Uh, but we also heard uh, some other comments that were echoed by President Lassner, when he was on this program, saying that the University of Hawaii it has not necessarily been involved in those conversations uh, about the future of Aloha Stadium at Halava and that they have made themselves available, but yet have not been invited to the table just yet. Yeah, and that is very significant. Also interesting to get their thoughts on uh, the legislature's initiatives to limit the emergency powers of the governor, uh, both of them speaking out pretty strongly against that, and both saying that Red Hill, that facility, sh the fuel storage facility should be shut down, uh, and Governor Abercrombie saying it should be shut down today. Yeah, and you heard uh, both of them having intimate knowledge about that facility and in the facility that's often a very secretive, hard to get access to. But as both former governors uh, are aware of the facility, uh, have taken tours of the area and know it well. Uh, but we heard their comments there about, of course, what's happening uh, with all of that over at Red Hill. We'll get the thoughts of our current governor, David Ige, on Monday to get his thoughts on this uh new variant that has found its way here into the state of Hawaii, as well as the Red Hill situation, as well as his comments on Aloha Stadium. A lot to catch up with with Governor Ige on Monday. We thank you again for your patience. We apologize for being a little uh, delayed this morning, as well as for some of the technical difficulties. But we thank you for sticking with us through this and wish you a great weekend. We'll see you right back here on Monday. Aloha. Aloha. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii was brought to you by Shamanad University.